Welcome to the State Television Company, Western Armenia, broadcast for today. The rights of the citizens of Western Armenia, Armenia Kablehamian. The pan turkey project of Turkey and Azerbaijan and the continuation of the genocide against Armenians, once and to clear. Vahagan, symbol of victory and courage. The destruction of the Armenian heritage of Western Armenia and its consequences, Patrick Dunabedian. Sons of Western Armenia, Haik Badikian. Tatoyan presented to German journalists the Azerbaijani crimes against Artsakh and the mechanisms of forced deportation of Armenians of Artsakh. Those who survived the explosion of the petrol warehouse in Artsakh. In the legal and democratic framework of the status of the citizens of Western Armenia, it is important that our elected officials have the mandate of our trust. This is possible only if all of us are citizens of Western Armenia. In this regard, the citizenship of Western Armenia is recognized by the United Nations and the Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples. We must re-establish as a people, otherwise we cannot secure our rights. The events that happened in Artsakh clearly show that the authorities of the Republic of Eastern Armenia did not have, and, uh, have the political will to protect Artsakh from Azerbaijan aggression. During the first war in Artsakh, we demonstrated our strength and today we must re-establish our right to defend ourselves. The National Council of Western Armenia was re-established in the liberated territory which has never been and will never be part of Azerbaijan. We are obliged to preserve our national identity and cultural heritage, as well as to face all challenges with the spirit of unity and struggle. Together we can formulate our future and reclaim our historic rights because our strength and unity in our hands. President Armena Gabrahamian. The genocide committed against the Armenians should be considered as a systemic process that began in the Ottoman Empire by the hands of Young Turks party in 1915. The genocide continued until 1923 and the Treaty of Lausanne finally confirmed the extermination of the Armenians. Before the genocide, about one and more million Armenians lived in the Ottoman Empire. After the great murders, only a few tens of thousands of Armenians remained, who later became victims of persecution and violence. The current policy of Turkey and Azerbaijan is a continuation of these historical realities, based on the pan turkism ideology. The wars between 1919 and 1923 and the creation of the new Turkey left Armenians in a pavilion and Armenians remained helpless in the eyes of the international community, which offered them little religious and humanitarian support. Now let's talk about Vahagan, symbol of victory and courage in Armenian. Vahagan embodies triumph, courage and victory in Armenian mythology. He is often mistaken for the god of fire, but this is a wrong approach. The Armenian Dikaren has no god of fire, and fire of lightning attributed to Vahagan are only symbols of power. Our ancestors created a value system based on eight virtues, the ideals of which people aspired to. Vahagan, as the force of courage and victory, was not worshipped, but glorified as the embodiment of strength. In this way, people awakened their inner Vahagan, living a strong and victorious life together. Staying true to our roots, we should also glorify Wagen, who lives inside our soul. In 2015, Germany recognized its complicity in the genocide against Armenians, which became important both on political and historical levels. The German state admitted that its military presence in the Ottoman Empire played an important role in the organization and implementation of the massacres of Armenians. Based on this reality, it is difficult to understand why the Turkish state is still required to officially recognize the genocide, since in fact it has already accepted its responsibility. Even though the word genocide did not exist at that time, German state accepted that the leaders of the Ottoman Empire were responsible for the massacre of hundreds of thousands, even millions of Armenians. However, genocide is not only the physical destruction of people, it includes the elimination of their cultural heritage too. The huge cultural heritage of the Armenian people in Western Armenia was the target of destruction. At the end of 19th century, during the reign of Sultan Abdul Hamid, not only mass massacres began, but Armenian architecture and culture was systematically destroyed. According to calculations made by German pastors at the end of the 19th century, many Armenian monuments and churches had been destroyed in the territory of Western Armenia. This process continued during the genocide against the Armenians in 1915 up to 1923, when not only the Armenians were physically annihilated, but their culture and historical presence was purposefully erased. 
Unfortunately, few documents have been preserved about Armenian churches, monasteries, and other cultural monuments during that period, but the facts that exist are photographs taken by Russian army soldiers, which testify to massive destruction. During the 20th century, the destruction of cultural heritage continued. In the 1950s, there was a destruction in Turkey, about which there is a little evidence, but the locals confirmed that many Armenian monuments were destroyed in those years. The same thing happened again in the 1970s, when the Turkish authorities started the elimination of Armenian cultural leaders. The genocide committed against the Armenians and the subsequent destruction of cultural heritage continued for a century with the same consistency, with the aim of erasing any traces of the Armenian people in the lands of Western Armenia. This loss is only increased, and we, as Armenians, are obliged to protect and preserve our history, despite all the difficulties. Haik Badigan was a famous sculptor in San Francisco, one of the sons of Western Armenia. Diverse in his style, he created a number of famous works of art that adorn many museums, parks, and buildings in the city and the United States in general. Badigan was born in the city of Van in Western Armenia, part of the Ottoman Empire at this time. In the early years of the formation of photography, his curious father started to deal with it, but being accused by the Turkish authorities of espionage in favor of Russia, he had to leave for the United States. Not long after, Badigan also left there, and after spending years on his father's prosperous farm in Fresno, he moved to San Francisco and started sculpting. Having made a name for himself as a talented sculptor in the United States, he traveled to Paris to perfect his art after the Great San Francisco Fire. But again, also created unique sculptures, decorating the facets of buildings, for example, for the Mo Metropolitan Life Building in San Francisco. Armand Tatoyan hosted a number of leading German journalists at the Center of Law and Justice in Tatoyan Foundations. He presented the Azerbaijani crimes against Artsakh and the Azerbaijani mechanisms of forced deportation of Armenians of Artsakh. On the example of the village of Nerkinhand of the Kapan community of the Sunik region, were presented the survivors of the Azerbaijani crimes in the border settlements of Armenia, the racism and hostility of Azerbaijan towards Armenia, and the state policy of destroying their Armenian identity. Arman Tatoyan presented the evidence with the effect of the cutting of thousands of trees in the Shirakahok reserve, tens of kilometers of military roads under construction, which caused catastrophic environmental damage to Armenia. Arman Tatoyan emphasized the importance of cooperation with both Armenian and international journalists that need to use this potential more fully to inform the world about Azerbaijani violations and to prevent new ones, especially before COP29. As a result of the explosion of the gasoline warehouse in Artsakh, survivors who need long-term rehabilitation treatment meet every day at the National Burn Center. As a result of the explosion that killed 219 people, more than 300 people were injured, many of their limbs were burned. Plastic surgeries have started in the burn department, but the scaring of the wound prevents the restoration of body's functionality. According to the Ministry of Health, 243 people received medical care in Armenian medical facilities, five of them children. The treatment of 20 people was organized abroad. In the United States, France, Italy, survivors of the explosion say that at the fuel storage area of the Haikazov military unit, they tried to keep a line to prevent smokers from approaching the wells, but there was no guard or regulator. Dear viewers, this was all for today. Goodbye.